but you know I like to take something difficult and make it very easy to understand. So while I was watching this video, my eight spoken contractions in English, I was thinking, actually, I can teach much more in an easier way. So this is an update of that. There's much more information in this one and it's much easier to understand. Remember, you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, at Papa Teach Me. Also remember to click like and subscribe and hit the bell to never miss a class again. So the first one we change is of and have to a, uh, the schwa. Say it with me, a. Uh. Most of, some of, a lot of, type of, kind of, anything of, you can change that of to just the a uh sound. Say it with me to practice. Most of, moster. Some of, summer. A lotter. Typer. Kinder. Again faster. Moster. Summer. A lotter. Typer. Kinder. If you didn't know, to be out of something means you have no more of that thing. It's finished. Done. Bye bye that thing. But the pronunciation, how do you pronounce that? Outer. No, we're out of donuts. What kind of movies do you like? Kinder. Kinder. What kind of movies do you like? Say it with me, practice. What kind of movies do you like? How do you pronounce that? Type of? Typer. I like comedy, action, that type of thing. Just so you know, type of, kind of, they mean the same thing. Most important of all, we don't reduce to just a uh, when there's a vowel sound after. For example, most important of all sounds good. Most important uh all sounds ridiculous. Don't reduce to uh when there's a vowel sound after. Might have, could have, would have, should have. All the other modal verbs with have afterwards. So how do these sound? For language geeks, the have reduces to of. A schwa with v. Might have. Say it with me. Could have. Would have. Should have. But also, you might hear the contraction even further to just the schwa. Mighta. Coulda. Woulda. Shoulda. And again, all the other modal verbs with have. Also in negative, same rules apply. So couldn't have can reduce to couldn't have. Say it with me, couldn't have. Or just a. Uh. Couldn't a. Couldn't a. Wouldn't a. Shouldn't a. Very common in fast spoken English. Not written English and definitely not formal, slow, clear speech. If you have a friend like this, then you could say to them, you should have gone to bed earlier. You should have gone to bed earlier. Even more contracted, shoulda. You shoulda gone to bed earlier. You shoulda gone to bed earlier. What are the rules and exceptions? If you say, I didn't have breakfast. Yes, there's the verb have, but you don't contract this one. You don't say, I didn't have breakfast. You don't say that, no. Why? Because it's those situations, like in modals of deduction. For example, you must have slept late. Yes, you can contract that. You must have slept late. You must have slept late. You must have slept late. That's fine. So in a conversation, you're speaking quickly. How do you reduce this? I would have. I'd have, right? If I had watched Papa Teach Me, I'd have learned a lot. That's fine. But we can reduce it even more. 
idav. We can reduce it further. Ida. Say it with me. Ida. So, repeat with me. If I'd watched Papa teach me, I'd have learned a lot. These contractions, these reductions, are for spoken English. More specifically, quick spoken English. Casual conversations. Only. If you're speaking slowly and clearly and carefully, you probably won't reduce these. Also, if you're writing at a test, definitely not. You will fail that test. These are not written at all. These are only spoken. Remember that. Don't get me in trouble with your teacher. Another example, a past conditional. Someone didn't go to the party, but you know, if they had gone to the party, they would have liked it. So you can say to that person, oh, you didn't go to the party? You'd have. You'd have liked the party. Say it with me. You'd have liked the party. Contract it even more. You'd have. You'd have liked the party. No. You'd have loved the party. Say it with me. You'd have. Do you want to come to a party tonight? It's at midnight. Future perfect. I will have gone to bed by then. You want to say before that time, this will happen. I will have gone to bed. I'll have could reduce to I love, but in fast spoken speech, we could pronounce this like Isla. Pff, midnight. I'll have gone to bed by then. Again, again, only for spoken fast English. Not slow, careful speech. Definitely not written. Most of the time, to gets reduced to t. Language geeks, this is for you. T and schwa, it's t. T. Say it with me. T. Now, I want to show you some exceptions, so I'm going to show you a few different ones. Want to. I want to go home. Say it with me. I want to go home. That's fine, but it's much more common to reduce this to I wanna. I wanna go home. If you're watching this video in class, look at your teacher in the face, in the eye, and say to your teacher, I wanna go home. I wanna go, where's your teacher sitting? There? I wanna go home. They wanna go home. Going to. Yes, you can contract to going to, and of course you can contract to gonna. It's much more common just to say gonna, gonna. I once worked with a teacher who said this, you, you know, all this gonna and wanna, I just, I don't want to teach it in classes because it's American and it's just wrong. I mean, that's a legit question, gonna, wanna, are they destroying English? Are they just American and we shouldn't use them? No, it's fine. You can say them and you should say them because they sound natural, they sound fine. One very common mistake. Be going to. That's a future tense. It's kind of like will. So we said I, future, go home. Fine. However, you can also use I'm going to, be going to, as a present continuous tense. For example, I'm going right now to school, to work. And this is the mistake I see. I'm going to school, that's fine, because that's a present continuous tense, right? But you can only reduce going to, to gonna, if it's a future tense. So, I'm gonna school, no. As a future tense, I'm gonna go to school, fine. But I'm gonna school, no. You don't contract the present continuous going to, to gonna, you don't do that. I've got to, we reduce this, yes, but we don't often pronounce it like gotta. 
we often do the American D thing. We say, I've got to, I've got to go. In American English, gotta. See, they also do the da, gotta. British, gotta. Um, Australian, gotta. And of course, ought to, which means should. You should go to the hospital. Yeah, we can say oughta. You really ought to go to the doctor. So notice that the to, it's never stressed. And also this sound is never stressed. The schwa is a lazy sound. You ought to go to the hospital. Have to and has to. Language nerds, that's for you. Have to sounds like have to, have to. Say it with me, have to. You're tired, you wanna go home. I have to leave, have to. Say it with me, have to. I have to leave. Sorry, I have to leave. Has to, has to. He has to leave. I have to leave. He has to leave. An example with this one, he has to finish some work. Say it with me. He has to. I have to. I have to. Make sure that syllable is not stressed. That one is the stressed one. Have to. Have to. Has to. Has to. Rhymes with pasta. In let me and give me. Very easy. Just remove the last sound of those two words. So let me becomes lemme and give me gimme. Repeat with me. Lemme. Let me tell you a story. Gimme. Give me a few minutes. <sighs> Ain't. The short explanation is this. Ain't means be not, so I am not, you are not, he, she, it, is not, or have not got. It can mean either of those things, but it doesn't follow traditional grammar rules. It doesn't change for third person, for example. This is considered bad grammar. Keep that in mind, but you will hear it. So how do you use it? For example, with be not, I saw the movie, it ain't good. You can say it that way, but again, know that it's considered bad grammar, but in songs you'll hear it, um, on TV and movies, you will hear it. So some people use it really because their style of speech involves a lot of bad grammar. But sometimes if you are well-spoken, you might use this to speak emphatically, to put some strength to what you're saying. Ha ha ha, I ain't happy. So if you compare that to, ha I'm not happy, that one sounds a bit stronger. There's a bit of style to it. That's the difference. And of course, for have not or have not got, you could say, I ain't got any money. Now it means I have not got any money. But remember I said this doesn't follow grammar rules. It's more used with people who often speak with bad grammar. So you can change this to I ain't got no money. Yeah, it's not correct, but you will hear it. In it. This is also not considered correct grammar. So if someone speaks with a style of bad grammar, they might say this. Not in American English. They don't say it. British English, yes. American English, no. It means, isn't it? A tag question. For example, cold today, isn't it? That's the correct way of asking this question. However, you could in a bad English style say, oh, cold today, innit? Interesting fact, in the north of England, northern English, they would say, innit? 
Southern London English, my English. Cold today, isn't it? Bad English? Cold today, isn't it? Northern English? Cold today, isn't it? I don't know where that voice came from. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, please click the like, click the subscribe, hit the bell so you get notifications, never miss a class again. Also, share this video with your friends, challenge them to learn this new pronunciation. You can support these lessons by joining my Patreon or by becoming a member of this channel. You'll get regular extra English practice, but also you'll be helping to support this channel. You can follow me on social media, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Papa Teach Me. And I'll see you in the next class.